in uh, teaching at uh, a college in Toronto and then in business. Uh, and so I have lots of uh, ideas from those areas. But what I really like to write about, what I really love to write about are the hidden depths of seemingly respectable people and uh, you know how almost anybody is capable of, of uh, murder and other crimes. That's me. And Carol? Okay, I am Carol Souls, and um, backgrounds and all that sort of thing. But anyway, I have um, written in all kinds of different genres. I have um, basically back in the old days, I taught. Um, <laughs> well, never mind. Um, and then I taught creative writing once I actually started to get published. So I write novels, short stories, uh, and there is one novella which I have written, but it doesn't uh, have about it yet. But um, we shall see how that goes. So I have also, um, if I say, been, um, no, things are jumping around here quite alarmingly. Um, anyway, never mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> fine. Um, and I guess that's enough for now. We'll, we'll talk about the different things that we write. Huh. And Rosemary. Hi, I'm Rosemary McCracken, and um, I write uh, I, I write novels and short stories. I have three novels of my Pat Tierney series, featuring a forty-something uh, woman, a financial planner who is uh, a, a sleuth as well. She uh, deals with a lot of white-collar crime. And uh, and lately, I've been doing the last several years. I've been doing a, a fair bit of short stories for a number of short stories, and I often, my protagonist is Pat Tierney. So it, I find that is, uh, it, that, it, it's basically uh, nurturing, the short stories are nurturing the, the, the novel. They're creating a, perhaps a, a, a market for, for my novels. I'm not doing this intentionally, but often when I'm writing a short story and a, a 40 something woman comes into it, uh, who's the protagonist, of course I'm going to make that cat. Uh, but if that's not the, the story I want to tell, I'll have another protagonist. But, um, so this is, uh, I'm getting the word of cat out. Uh, and inadvertently, I didn't intend to do this, but I'm doing this. And then hopefully down the road, I will have enough cat stories to come out with a, uh, uh, a, a, an anthology of catching these stories. A lot of writers do this. Sarah Peretsky has done this. Uh, there's uh, the Ivarshovsky stories in, in various anthologies. Um, Agatha Christie did it. There's, there's Poirot stories, and there's at least one Miss Marple story that I've read. So uh, it's been done. So this is a little bit something about me. And I have a journalism background as well. I worked at the Calgary Herald for those out there like you did you did <laughs> well i i have a totally uh and I, I i trained as a scientist and then i worked in it for many years and also in the government bureaucracy so if you want to talk about rigidity in writing i was really hard to overcome because especially in the bureaucracy your whole uh, reason for being is to be unclear <laughs> and <laughs> that you would need for short story writing or or writing at all, or creativity, but I I I, I went beyond that, and now I am a, a writer. I have published one novel. My novel came out in the 2015. I was traditionally published, and most of the time, though, I do write short fiction. Although I tend to be rather long-winded, and um, a, a very a dear friend of ours in our writing group told me a long time, Sylvia, that really you're more of a novelist, but. I guess I'm lazy because I don't really, it, a novel is an awful lot of work and a lot of complexity, which kind of brings me to our next question that we're going to talk about is what we liked or disliked about uh, short stories, first of all, and then about novels. So I, I'm going to ask uh, Rosemary, really, because you have really strong opinions about short stories and novels in crime fiction. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, at first, I didn't consider myself a short story writer. I, 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 I liked writing a, a longer piece of fiction. But starting, and, and I had a couple of, two short stories published 
eons ago, 20 plus years ago. And somehow they got published and I wrote them and whatever. But I didn't consider myself a short story writer until uh, there have been more opportunities in recent years. The Maidens of Mayhem, which were uh, all of uh, us are part of the Maidens of Mayhem, a larger group collective of, of writers, have put out an anthology every two years. We have four out. And every big mystery conference now has an anthology. Boucher Con has an anthology. Yes, Carol's holding it. Our most recent, the key of 13. Um, so there's more opportunity. So I always make, a, I'm one to make, uh, to take advantage of opportunities. And uh, so they're there. So I started writing them and realized I actually quite like writing short short, uh, short fiction. Uh, and like Lynn, I'm a journalist. And uh, so I don't write, uh, I, I have been encouraged not to write a whole lot of, uh, a lot of description, which comes in quite handy with, with short, with short fiction. Uh, and it's great when you're using a character that like my cat, Tony, that you already know a lot about. You don't have to create a background for her. You know her background, or you, you know his background. It's some of the secondary characters will come in, into that as well. Um, so that I do like, I, much to my surprise, I do like like uh, writing short fiction. And now I'm writing it. I'm reading it a lot more, and just mm -hmm. love it, love it too. Uh, I'd also love the ending, and I'm I'm getting trying to get better at that. The twist ending. That's very, uh, love, very characteristic of the crime fiction genre. Yeah. Twist. Love right? to take a workshop on how to create twist endings. Now, sometimes you can't do a twist with a crime. We can do another kind of twist. And uh, but you want something? Do you want to end it with a punch? It's like it's short. It's pithy. It's like being on stage in a short, short comedy routine. You've got to end with a punch, and then you get out. Yeah. So Carol, oh, sorry to interrupt. I was very, uh, Carol, you write both novels and short stories. So which form do you prefer? Or do you have a preference? Oh, I much prefer novels. Uh, I know it takes a long time, but I find that if you're writing short stories, it's all this effort to create the characters and their world and all this background, and then it's over. And although I must admit, several of mine have turned into books later. But anyway, so I find I tend not to write them just sort of out of the blue. So I'm not a natural short story writer. I really want to wallow around in the world and with the characters and uh, find out all the nitty gritty in the backstory and all the rest of it, which you can't do. And uh, could I ask, please, by the way, that people who are in the audience put their mute on because I find it quite disgusting. <laughs> Well, so that kind of brings me to sort of like how we use stories in crime fiction. So there's two uses. There's a creative uses and then there's the crash com crass commercial use. So uh, we, we kind of glanced on, on this al already, but I prefer to talk about the more creative aspects, which is what to build on what Carol was saying is that, you know, you, you can create a world but with a short story, you have to, to leave it. But is there a way that we can go from a short story to a novel? And I think that happens fairly often in speculative fiction, but although it, and it can happen in crime fiction, but not so frequently. More often, it's the other way around, going from novels where you have a, a fully developed character and then you write like a smaller adventure for them in, in a short story. If you want to go back, I mean, does anybody read Craig Johnson? If if you, he's one of my absolute favorite writers, and the Longmire, the Longmire novels, and and uh, Craig Johnson writes in all three genres. He writes, of course, he's developed Longmire through all his novels, but then he's written, a, you know, a fabulous novella which is a, about a harrowing flight in a in a plane a plane that's falling apart. It's one of the best suspense stories I've ever read. That was a novella. And then he's written, you know, dozens and dozens of short stories. Um, I'm going to hand this over to you, Jane, and, and how do you see crime fiction stories being used creatively? 
me. I was just trying to mute. We have a few participants who haven't muted, and I'm hearing ocean waves. I don't know if anybody else is. Yeah, that's what um, Anyway, I, I just muted one person. Um, I am like Carol. I like to wallow in uh, reading and in writing, which is not good for short stories. <laughs> so I, I tend to overwrite them. I only got into short stories. I used to dislike the medium. Uh, I, it was too short. You know, I'm sort of a more of a trollop person than a, you know, a short story writer. Um, but I got into it, uh, was lucky in the result. And uh, I've come to really appreciate the arc of it. Um, I, I uh, want to get into writing novels. And I think one of the advantages of um, short stories is that you can try different things out. Um, you, you can try different characters. I have one character from a short story in, uh, called There Be Dragons in 13 Claws, a Maydam of Mayhem anthology. And I really want to expand that into possibly a YA series. So that, that's, that's really where I am. Uh, I, I think um, short stories are a wonderful way for any authors and new authors to try uh, different ideas, to learn techniques, etc. So, so that, that's more or less where I am. Um, and, and Lynn, I want to ask you about novellas because I know you're working on a novella right now. And that's sort of one way to expand your world from a short story in, into a novella. So tell us what you like about the novella form. Well, what I like about the novella is that you do not have to dedicate three years of your life to writing it, which you <laughs> tend to have to do with a novel, as Rosemary said. <laughs> that, uh, writing, writing a novel, you really, you know, have to write and rewrite and rewrite, and it takes up so much time, whereas a novella, you can expand your short story characters but you don't have to have, for example, a subplot. So many crime novels nowadays have to have a subplot. Have you noticed, you know? And, and they're in the reviews and they say, and there is a subplot involving the something or other. In a novella, you don't have to have a subplot. You can write it just your straight, the story that you want to write. And the one I'm writing now, I'm, it started out as a, no, a novel. And then I thought, I don't have the energy now to write this as a novel. So I've shortened it down to writing it as a novella. And I think it's working quite well. The trouble with novellas is finding a place to get them published. You tend to have to uh, maybe put them in a collection with a group of short stories. Um, that, that's the main problem about novellas. Nobody's going to publish sort of 120, or very rarely, if you're P.D. James, they might publish a 120 page novella, but. For the rest of us, no. One thing that I wanted to say about uh, writing short stories too is I have several of my short stories involve a group of uh, older women living in a condo, and so I get to I have my characters pre pre created, and so I can pop them into another story, and I know who they are, and I know what how they're likely to react which is sort of like Rosemary with her with Pat Tierney, doing the Pat Tierney stories. She's, she has her character there already. She has to, doesn't have to go into character development, which is one of the uh, things about short stories that you don't have time for much character development. But you have to be careful, Lynn, also to make, you know that character very well, but, so, but you have to be, make sure that the uh, reader who may ne not have met uh, Pat Tierney or your women in the condo, uh, you don't have to make sure that they uh, they get that information, that bit of backstory. Yes, yeah, that's true. But also, you know the person in your head, so you know how they're likely to react when something happens. Yeah. So, so you've got a personality there, like the people you know in real life. You know how they're likely to react if someone offends them, for example. That's, uh, that's the main value of them, I think, Rosemary. Yeah. You mean our characters aren't real? <laughs> <laughs> well, they better not be Jane. 
<laughs> well, you know, it's it's interesting that because we're we're talking about like things being a more constrained in crime fiction perhaps than they are in speculative fiction, and and I I think that we we have a lot more opportunity through digital media now really to take an idea and then basically write that as long as it'll take. I mean, I believe we've all had this experience where you have a, a terrific idea and you write it and, it and really it only works into a short story. Or sometimes you start to write a short story and you think it, it's going to turn into a, no, into, it turns into a novel. In fact, I'm working on a novella right now that is turning into a, a novel. Uh, but I guess one of the difficulties in crime fiction is there aren't that many markets for novellas right now. So I would say that the novella is is narrow, narrow, but I think it is that may change. That may very well change. I mean, and right now, like the publishing opportunities for crime fiction novellas, there was a, a lot through Orca Books, which published easy reads. I don't know if people have heard of these, but a lot of these are um, written for people that are having literacy issues and. Um, it was a, it's been a huge success and and many many crime writers have had their books have had books published and novellas really published through the orca series but um another way that people can do it is to put it into an anthology or do, or that your novella can be part of an an anthology or if you have your own short story collection you could have your short stories plus you include a novella so those are some of the means that we can publish novellas nowadays. But I, I just want to now segue into sort of saying like how we actually get into the crash bit, like how we actually use short stories in crime fiction. I wondered if, Rosemary, you, you've talked a bit about that, but if you'd like to expand on that. Uh, well, I didn't, as I said, I didn't start out to do this. I just uh, was writing a, a short story for the very first Madame's um, Anthology 13. And I decided to do, to, to, it was a, uh, uh, a sweetheart scamster. Uh, this, a sweetheart scam is generally uh, preyed upon uh, on older people. Uh, and often a person who poses as a romantic interest, but they're just trying to get money out of that person. And uh, so I, I did this, and of course, with that kind of scam, a financial planner is the perfect protagonist to tell the story. Uh, so I had, there was Pat Tierney. So I didn't do this on purpose, but it does turn out to be a, a, a good marketing tool because it's getting the name out. You could put a little blurb at the end of the story saying, Rosemary's Pat Tierney story. Uh, Pat Tierney character appears in these three novels, and the fourth is coming. Fourth novel is coming out this fall. Um, but uh, uh, so it, it, yeah. So it's a marketing tool. Is that what you're, what you're I'm going off on a tangent here? Is that your question, Madeline? Yeah, uh, it, it was. Yeah. Like it's it's it is a way that and I wouldn't I do it if it was like, strictly a mar marketing tool. Like I, yeah. I I couldn't couldn't write something that's just a marketing tool. It just happened to be serendipity that it turned out to be that way. Yeah, it, it's one of the side benefits of short fiction that you can, yeah. as an emerging writer, it is a very, it's much easier perhaps to get a short story published than it is a novel if you're just starting out as an emerging writer. Or if you want to try a different, a different approach or to experiment. It, it is probably easier to do that than to devote a lot of time to a novel. But it, it's also a, a really good promotional opportunity for authors sometimes, because I think what Rosemary was talking about is through VoucherCon, for instance, will put out an anthology and, and you, you can appear in that if you're fortunate enough to get your story published in it. And what we have, done as the Madame of Mayhem, which is, is actually to, was to use our anthologies. And, and I'm going to hold this one up. That's the one that Carol was showing you earlier, just the In the Key of 13, which is, it is an opportunity for our readers, for readers to discover new writers. We are a collective and you, you can come and meet us in a couple of hours where we're going to talk about what the Maydam and Mayhem are, but we're a collective, but we write very differently. So there's 
Melody Campbell, who is uh, our queen of comedy. And then there's all the way down to well, Carol and, and me. It was probably a bit more on the dark side. <laughs> and uh, that way, our readers can find new writers. And if they like your work in the book, it's like, it's like a buffet for a, for a reader to, to, to discover us. And it was also sort of a way of sort of being strength in numbers of promoting everyone and sort of get, of getting noticed, which sort of brings me to the next question, which is about anthologies, which are perhaps for crime fiction, one of the best ways to get uh, crime fiction short stories published. And there are lots, lots happening. And I think as we heard earlier, you know, as more people write them, people become more interested in reading them as well. So I'm going to hand that over to, to you, Lynn, and talk a little hey, bit Carol, about it. Carol, did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, yes, sorry, Carol, did I miss you? You had your hand up. I just... <laughs> anyway, sorry. I wanted to go back to something else, actually, before we, before we get sure. into Okay. Um, because um, another thing that, that short stories are really good for is I don't think it's actually been brought up. Maybe it has, and I missed it. But uh, to experiment. And uh, for instance, I have a collection of, of short stories. This one is the Do You Know Me? I came out last year. And every single one of these stories is a completely different uh, style and even genre. And uh, it, was, it was very, I, I didn't write this. There are only there are three new stories. There are most of them reprints. So I, it was interesting to me to find out that some of these stories I actually wrote to find out if something would work. I mean, I had the idea and I thought, well, let me try it this way. So that's, that's sort of another aspect of what Rosemary was talking about. Um, she was talking about, you know, doing the same characters and um, a sort of promotion for the novels. I mean, I do that as well because in a new anthology, which is coming out in September, I think, uh, some of us are in that. It's not a Madame's of Mayhem anthology. It's another one. Uh, Donna Carrick doing it. And in that one, I use my character, Marlo Dasha Bogardini, from the uh, Merculean series. And there he is back there, Marlo's dance. And I use that character to, um, he's, he's, a, he, he's a policeman, I guess you could even call him that, in this world, in my world of the Merculean. And the story is about him tracking down a murder in on Merculean. And it's just so, so that too, it's exp experimenting with, because I'd never written a short story about these chaps. And uh, there's this one. And also if, if people are interested in the story, then as, as Rosemary said, they hopefully will look at the books. So anyway, I just wanted to bring up the aspect of the experimental things that one can do. So, so Lynn, just yeah, thanks, Carol. That's that's absolutely absolutely right. And um, so, anthologies. We are slowly getting more recognition. And Carol, I'm going to ask you before I go back to Lynn. They have a, actually an anthology award, the Bram Stoker Awards, because you put together with Jane an anthology about uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Nancy, excuse me. It was with Nancy Kilpatrick. Yeah, Nancy Kilpatrick was the other editor. Mm -hmm. And it was up for the Bram Stoker Award. So, but I think they are slowly, as again, crime fiction is slowly getting more. It was also up for the Horror Award. With, with the, the, the speculative fiction genre. And, and now I think the Anthony Awards now have a best anthology category. Really because again, I think this is again, a growing field and a growing opportunity for publication. And there's, some interesting things happening in the United States, uh, perhaps more than Canada, but this is something perhaps that we could all think about as an opportunity, is that they put together an anthology that, ha that has an overarching story. So that it's almost like, it becomes almost like a novel. So um, one of the ones I'm thinking about is um, called Night of the Flood, which is about a, of a huge dam burst in the southern states 
and then that all the crimes and the the uh, that happen as a result or the near escapes and the thrillers and the criminals that are running around and but it's all based on this one cataclysmic event and it and sort of arching through is sort of when the dam breaks and then sort of when things get under control is sort of the arc for the whole story for the whole book but that that is really a really interesting take on an anthology but we and the Madams tend to pick a theme and our first, our very first book, which was uh, called 13, we didn't really have a very, it was pretty eclectic. And the only thing that was common about it is that we had 13 authors. So we called it 13, <laughs> but then we got a little bit more creative as we went on. And the next one, so this is our very, very first one, 13. You can see it as a lion and Toronto on the cover. And then just there was a lion in there was a lion in one of the stories. And a, and a lot of stories were set in Toronto. So we, we got a bit more organized. And then for the second one, we did the theme of time. So we called that 13 o'clock. And then this is perhaps my my personal favorite, which is we did animals. This is one that we've been wanting to do a long time, which is called 13 Claws. And these are all sort of animal based crime stories. And the last one, which is another one, I think, which is, I think our most polished one and organized one, which is in the key of 13, which is all based on music. So there's a music theme in each of these stories. So that is, is another way of, of going about doing anthologies. But over to you, Lynn. All, all the... Uh, Ed Rosemary Elf. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'll just make this brief. All the big uh, conferences have uh, their anthologies that usually have a theme as well, like Malice Domestic is yes. murder, murder Most Edible. Uh, next year, they'll have another theme, so you have to write according to that theme. Go ahead, Lynn. Yeah, I was just thinking, I don't know that, like writing to order, having to write about a flood and the same flood and everything, I don't know that I would want to do that, to be so restricted in, in uh, have somebody tell me, you have to write about this, this flood and, you know, no. The anthologies, I think, are fun because um, it's, the themes are pretty wide. I mean, animals and time and music, this last one. I um, wanted, I had an idea in my head to, to write about uh, murders in, in nursing homes. I had this thing haunting me about the, that nurse, Elizabeth Wetlofer, who killed all these patients in the Ontario nursing home, injecting them with uh, uh, insulin. And I thought, now how am I going to get music into that? And then I thought, well, I will use my, one of my elderly ladies, she belongs to a seniors choir that goes out and sings in nursing homes. And so that was, that was how I got music into it. And it was very clever how, how other people got, got their music in. Some people, like you, Madeline, you had somebody with an earworm going That's on. Right. Yeah. But, um, and, and Rosemary's Elvis story of going down for Elvis's funeral, that was a natural for- Well, I went to Elvis's funeral. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Go ahead and tell about it. <laughs> oh, it ages me. I realize he died. How many years ago he died? Go ahead, Lynn. But but um, but I I don't think I want would want to be so restricted as being part of one one larger story. That's all I'm saying. I don't think I like that idea, Madeline, for an anthology. Sorry, don't don't decide you're going to do one because <laughs> no, I haven't decided. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like for instance, I couldn't write about that flood either. If it was a flood in Toronto or a city I'd lived in, maybe it could would re uh, resonate with me. But that flood wouldn't. But um, other times, uh, as a journalist. Uh, in my early days as a rookie reporter, you go to work, that, and that means you don't have a beat, you don't have a specialty. So you go in every day and you're given an assignment and it, you have no idea if you're going to be going to a cat show. Generally, it's not something very 
very challenging if it's for us. But it can be if you don't like cats <laughs> and or you're allergic to them. But but you've got you go in and every day it's something new. It's go go down to Harbor Front and uh, write uh, write a color piece about what people are doing there today on a Sunday, a lovely Sunday afternoon, and you think, oh my God, you've got to interview all these people who are having their nice family picnic. <laughs> think, oh my God, um, but you do it. Because you have to. So, so a lot of these. So the same thing when I when I see these, uh, I wrote for got wrote for the uh, uh, the anthology Murder Most Edible, and I wrote uh, that that had so, something to do with food. It could be anything. So of it's course a there food were a lot of critic food. who gets what's coming to him. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. So at one point I was a food critic. I was a restaurant critic at the Calgary Herald for a while. And uh, for those in Calgary, you can remember way back in, in the 80s. And uh, anyhow, I uh, so I wrote about I wrote about a, a, a bent food critic, which definitely wasn't me. And it was a male. It wasn't a pet to any story. So you can just think, like, try thinking out of the box. You know, I mean, everybody, food, everybody can relate to. You can, everybody can think of a story with food. There are some stories you, you can't. But so I, I think it's just a good, in our... Um, 13 Claws, one of our writers in there, Catherine Dunphy, wrote a lovely story about, not about animals, she doesn't have any pets, but about animal crackers. So she took that, that animal and pushed, theme and pushed it. And it, and it came out with this, with this lovely thing. So you can do a lot of things by being forced to do them. But sometimes like that flood, you know, I could, certainly could, don't think I could write about it. That flood in that in that city. Yeah, it's it's a it's it, it could be a challenge. I guess if well, speaking personally, like I had been sort of scribbling away at a novel. As I said, I'm I'm very lazy, and writing a novel to me is like this overwhelming task. And so I'd been I'd written a few chapters of a of a character. It was a it was an older woman, but an older woman who's tough, not the Miss Marple tough. This is a an older one new kicks but and then I had it I was actually invited to participate in this anthology and it's it's actually and I'm gonna uh, blow Axel's horn here Axel does the uh, noir at the bar he did noir at the bar last night and uh, he has an amazing press and there's some amazing work coming out of it called Coffin Hawk Press and Axel put together this anthology and it's about Canadian it's all Canadian crime writers but they're all women and all the protagonists are women it's called the dame was trouble and it was great because i just had these four chapters that had been sitting in my file cabinet for a while and i didn't know what to do with them and i it was a challenge and I, sometimes i need a kick in the butt and i and i sat and i wrote a short story with this character and it turned out to probably be one of my personal favorite short stories and one that I have gotten the most, uh, one of some of the most positive feedback ever from readers on this. So I, I think the thing can work. Like if you got something in your, in your file drawer that you can pull out and, and rework, maybe just to go cold into it, like Lynn was talking about is, is more difficult if you have to kind of write to order. But I, oh my goodness, we are getting, oh, Jane, yeah, sorry. I just want to say I rather like the challenge of writing to a particular theme or a particular concept because it uh, sort of gets my super ego into shape and I sort of I really like it I, and I love riffing off it I, I love the uh, animal cracker story for there be um, for 13 claws I wrote about dragons uh, just and and ended up with uh, a touch of Celtic magic in it I, I really enjoy that so uh, so different, you know, if you had a theme of spirits, you, you, you could write many, many, many different concepts on it. And, and I like uh, sort of taking that on anyway. Um, Madeline, we have a question. I don't know if it's time for questions yet. Yes, I think so. I just wanted, before we get into questions, and we, and we have a couple of excellent comments actually have come through too that I wanted to share with everyone. But before we do that, I just um, wanted to ask everybody, if they could share what their personal favorite short story or novel is and why. I'm starting with Lynn. 
and we'll go across the board and this is through all formats. What is your favorite work really in crime fiction oh, that you have created? Um, well, I won't, I'm not sure that it's my favorite, but I think it is the most haunting and one that stayed with me the most short story. And that is The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. I think that's an absolutely wonderful story. There's, it's very sparely written. There's no descript or very little description in it. And you don't know what's happening at first. And it builds and builds and builds until the last sentence, which is, and then they were upon her, which I, I just think it's one of the best short stories, crime short stories. It's not really crime, is it? It's what is it? It's not. Well, it's a murder. <laughs> it's a murder, definitely. <laughs> but it's not an unsolved crime. But I think the lottery is a story that sticks in your head. So not my favorite, but one of the best short stories I've ever read. And what about your own work? What about your oh, my own? own work? I'm supposed to talk about my own work? <laughs> yeah. This um, is an opportunity for blatant self-promotion here. <laughs> well, I think, I think my favorite short story is the very first one I had published about the ladies in the condo where they uh, strip themselves down to nudity and uh, frighten a poor man to death. <laughs> and just, just the, the picture of those five or six elderly ladies, stark naked, leaping out at him and shouting pervert so that he falls over backwards and whacks his head and dies. I, I love that. I, I just <laughs> enjoy that so much thinking about that. Yes, it's called The Troublemaker and it's in our first um, 13. No, no, it's not in 13. It's in the um, the Sisters in Crime first anthology of uh, the, the whole shebang. Yeah, the whole shebang. Yeah. yeah. Jane. Oh, um, there's a short story written by Ruth Rendell that I just discovered oh a month or three ago. Uh, it's called Loopy, uh, and it is it, it it's just such quiet build and and such a reasonable approach, which I really like, where the, the um, uh, protagonist uh, talks uh, about what went on when, uh, when he uh, sort of became somewhat obsessed with something. I, I don't want to give it away, but it, it's really interesting. Of my own short stories, um, uh, I was going to say, uh, this is the book that uh, Carol and Nancy, um, um, oh, it's backwards, isn't it? Uh, no, it's perfect. It looks it's perfect. fine for us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and it's it was actually uh, nominated, I believe, for the Aurora. It um, well, it's that's the one that was nominated for Bram Stoker. Yeah. And the Aurora. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, the Aurora. Uh, Sorry. Yes. I, I I kind of like the inheritance. I loved doing um, sort of an homage to Poe that was um, uh, based on the Raven. Uh, it's funny when I was writing it, I couldn't see. And I was on a, a cruise and uh, I only had an hour a day when I could actually see. I, I had a, an eye condition. Um, and so it was a challenge to write it, but I, I really enjoyed it. I love Pope. Anyway, that's it. And, and Carol? Yes, well, as far as other people's short stories, um, the, the one that jumped right into my mind was The Turn of the Screw, which is not exactly, you know, published yesterday. It's terrifying. <laughs> But it, it was just amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, as far as my own, oh dear. Um, I think one that, that I really love, and it's actually only in one place, or it might be in an old anthology, I can't remember. It's called The Secret Child. And it is, um, is one of the Merculean stories. And it's really quite heartbreaking about this that's what he goes to this place and discovers he has children he didn't know anything about and they're dying and he can't do anything about it. And um, it's, 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 it's just, you know, every time I even think about it, I get all choked up, which is quite silly considering. <laughs> but anyway, I'm quite fond of that one. And Rosemary? Um, okay, I guess one of my favorite uh, uh, crime fiction stories is A Jury of Her Peers by Susan Glassville. It was written in 1917 and uh, it's considered a early feminist uh, uh, 
story. Uh, it's based on the um, the author was a journalist and she covered a real life murder. And so this story is a fictionalized, well, sort of a based on it. Uh, and any, I won't tell you what goes on, but this man is killed and the uh, women in the community are able to solve the murder mystery who killed him uh, just because they're women. Uh, just because, and they're, or they're ordinary women, they're housewives, and they come into the house, and they, they just seeing ordinary things, they are able to solve it, knowing female psychology, and, uh, and knowing uh, their own female psychology, and knowing, uh, anyhow, I'm talking too much about this, I'll, I'll give it all away, uh, read it, it it's, I mean, it's uh, you, can, you can download it, it's the uh, I guess the uh, uh, 1917, so the uh, copyright has, you can find it online, the copyright has, has, uh, has uh, gone. It's no longer under copyright. It's over 100 years old. And my own is probably the, the Sweetheart Scamster that I mentioned before. In 13, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty short, pretty bare bones. Uh, and it's, I guess I like it. One of the reasons I like it is uh, I was a finalist for a Derringer uh, uh, with it. So uh, certainly do like like that. And it's my first Pat Tierney short story. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I'm going to pick a, a, a story. It's probably fairly obscure. It, it appeared, um, and it, it's, a, it's a, a Canadian writer, James Powell. He wrote a lot of, a lot of short stories for, um, uh, the, you know, Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine and, and uh, Ellery Queen. And his story is called Bottom Walker. And what he can do in 3,000 words is amazing. We're uncovering a sort of a depth of, of what happens when this man who has Alzheimer's and likes to tell stories starts to tell a story a little bit differently. And the last line is just chilling. Without giving too much away, tell me again how mother died. Hmm. 3,000 words. Amazing. You know, it's just absolutely amazing. And another story that really, and I can, the name of the author escaped me, but it was an American writer. It was a woman. And it was called A Good Man is Hard to Find. And it's about, it's, it's I, I would call it, I guess you leave the genre, probably a psychological thriller, but it is one of the most terrifying stories I have ever read. And of course, I have to blow our own horn too, which is in 13 Claus, Kathy Astolfo's story in here, which actually did win an Arthur Ellis Award called The Outlier about, and if you've ever seen Lock, Stock and Barrel, Never trust a man what keeps pigs. You, <laughs> it is again one of the scariest stories I have ever read. But I, I want to make sure we got some amazing questions here, and I, and I apologize we've run a bit over time. But we have one here from Jean Martinson, who says, "My background is in journalism, and I'm attracted to mystery writing. And do you think journalists are more?" likely to be attracted to writing crime fiction? This is a very interesting question. So I'm going to throw that out to the panel. Well, Rosemary, I think you'll agree with me that we do have a lot of connection to crimes working, working on newspapers, working in news, so that we have a lot of material almost firsthand. So I think that, yes, journalists tend to be um, Linwood Barclay, for example, who's been very successful, and he was a journalist. What about you, Rosemary? What do you think? And, yeah, and most of us in our early days at the Windsor Star, I was uh, going to court, a provincial court. It wasn't uh, the the more senior people we got the murders, but I had the provincial court, so they were shoplifting and prostitutes and whatever. So you got to you know the court system a little bit. You got to know police officers and you're get you have to be friendly with them and all of that. So we most of us have, have been to have covered things in, in court. We've covered the police state a, a little bit. It, it may not have been our specialty, but we can't be often pinch hit on the police bit for the bit for the evening and all of that. So yes, definitely. Right. And and we have another question which is for the panel and how is crafting short stories enhanced your writing skills? Interesting question. Well, 
I think if you set out to write a short story, you have to really concentrate on every word because there's usually, if you're writing for an anthology, say, there is a word limit. And um, so you, you cannot just keep wandering on. So I think in that way, it really does hone your skills. And I find some of my really short stories, the shorter ones, work best because there's so much between the lines, which is simply suggested. And you don't have to actually say it in, in so many words. So I, that's one great thing about, about writing short stories. It does help. What do you think? Okay. You're scowling at me. I, no, I'm not. So I lit up for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a wanderer honor. I, I, I overwrite. I, I write, I do too much description. I do too much everything just to sort of get myself into the process. It's, it's almost like method acting, only it's method writing. And then what's, what is enhanced is my editing. <laughs> I have to get in there with my blue pencil and just, just be brutal. And uh, you know, the, the old uh, saying that uh, the writing that you most admire, you should probably take out. That's true. Uh, I've used short stories to try and learn a lot about writing. I, I, I don't know a lot about writing, but I'm, I'm working on it. And uh, dialogue, for instance. Um, you have to try and make it interesting so it's not always he said she said so you you learn uh, ways i both by reading short stories and reading stories generally and by writing them so i see it as a learning tool I'm, I'm not sure it is. okay well i think we are actually out of time i want to thank everyone so much for being here um this has been like absolutely amazing experience for us to to be here in Ontario and be talking to everybody out west and through, through and uh, connecting with so many different people, um, it, you've been a wonderful audience. And um, I'm going to now put up on the chat a, a couple of our websites if you'd like to go check us out farther. Um, as uh, Catherine was saying in an earlier meeting, in the chat function you can actually save. You can actually save it if you go. There's some three dots at the bottom right hand corner and if it, if you click on that you can save the chat file and that way you can save our our website addresses that i'm going to put the madame of mayhem now and i'm also going to invite everyone to come and meet the madame of mayhem um in a couple of hours and we can um and uh, you're very welcome to come so and you may want to check out the shared author table for our, yes, our books, uh, under under mystery, there's various uh, categories. We're under mystery. All the madams uh, for anthologies are there. My um, uh, my Pat Tierney uh, novels are there with the Amazon links. I think Carol's yours are in another category. Is that correct? I don't know where they are because I they're I, there. I saw them, but I I think you're under maybe fantasy. Oh my goodness! But anyhow, check it out. Just if you don't see Carol under one, under one category, look for her under either mystery or or, or fantasy. But the rest of us, the anthologies are under mystery. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. You've been absolutely Thank awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. <laughs>